G'day guys, how are you going? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean and today we're having a look at a new exciting product that Deepcool sent over for review. This is their LT720 all-in-one liquid cooler, which has a really interesting design on the outside of that pump block combo. It's got like an infinity mirror design. And so what we're gonna do is get it out of the box, see what the hardware and accessories are like, see what the fit and finish is like, and then most importantly, get it installed on my own personal system, which is running an AMD 5900X CPU. We've got precision boost turned on, that CPU draws like 200 watts, and we're gonna see how this actual cooler performs. So if you're interested in this cooler, hopefully this video helps you out. If you have any comments or questions about this video, or about the product I should say, leave them in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, chuck it a like, get subscribed, and let's begin. Alrighty, so we've got everything out of the box and on the desk here, and one thing that stood out to me straight away was the fact that this pump cover, the block, the cube, the infinity mirror cube, I'm gonna call it that, that's the name that I'm giving it, um, can actually be removed from the pump itself. And so the good thing about that, in my opinion, from an aesthetics point of view, is the fact that when the pump block combo is actually installed and mounted to your CPU and motherboard, the actual screws that hold it in that normally stick out and are exposed and look a little bit ugly are actually all covered and hidden by this pump cover, which I think is a really, really smart move from Deepcool. Now, in terms of the specs of the cooler, I'm gonna leave the link to the product down in the video description so you guys can go and you know, read that and check it out. But a real short version is that these fans can go from 500 RPM to 2250 RPM, so they're a four pin PWM fan. The tubes on the actual all-in-one cooler that go from the radiator to your CPU are 410 millimeters long, so if you wanna do a front mount or a top mount um, on your case, you shouldn't have any issues there. This, in terms of ha uh, sorry, mounting hardware, can go on your 13th gen, your AM5, your Threadripper, literally any CPU that you have, um, this is going to be able to work with it. And the fact that they've got the AM5 socket covered and the 13th gen, I think it's socket 1700 covered, uh, but also your 2011s and all those different variations are all gonna be covered with the mounting hardware. So there's nothing that you need to worry about in terms of, you know, will this have the bracket that I need for my motherboard or for my CPU. Um, you get a little bit of RGB control so you can sync up the pump you know, with, or sorry, the, the RGB pump cover, the cube. Um, you can sync that up with your motherboard software if you wanna do that, or if you just wanna let it cycle through its own patterns, you can do that as well. So if you're not a big fan of software, you don't have to use the software to control the colors. But the pump is a new fourth gen pump. So this pump can go up to 3100 RPM. Again, it can be controlled via software. So if you wanna turn it down or have it ramp up, it's up to you entirely, just your personal preference. And you've got these little clips here as well that go on to the actual tubes, just because the tubes are so long, I think having these little clips here, if you wanna use them, just keep everything nice and tidy and make it look nice and clean. So overall, you know, quality of the fans, um, by the way, these are a fluid dynamic fan, so similar to what you see on the NZ, NZXT fans, um, very, very smooth bearing and, and very long lasting as well. So let's get this installed to the computer, let's see how that process goes, and I'll come back to you guys in a moment once it's all done. Alrighty, so the cooler is installed and you can see that infinity mirror design on the pump and I do have to apologize because in the beginning I was saying that it was really awesome that this pump was actually going to cover those screws up in the top there and down on the bottom, but it actually doesn't cover the screws entirely. It does a pretty good job and I do like the fact that they do have black bracket so if you do have a motherboard which is black which most of them are you know those screws and those brackets aren't going to turn out um, not going to stand out sorry too much but overall the actual pump cover and that infinity design on that cube i think actually looks 
really, really cool. Now I do have it synced up as well with the ASUS Armory Crate software. So the RGB is all in sync with each other and we've just got that sort of rainbow pattern going on at the moment. Now the keen eyed among you might notice that with the actual fans up in the top here, we've had to, you know, swap one of them out. And unfortunately the reason why is this fan here, this guy just does not want to spin at all. It did spin a little bit in the beginning, but it was making some funny noises and I still have it connected at the moment to see if it's gonna come to life, but unfortunately it just isn't working. So that's a real, that's a real bummer. Um, but the other two are fine. And what we've done is we've just chucked in one of the case fans, which I know is not ideal at all, uh, but this is a case fan that come with you know, this thermal take case, just so we can run some benchmarks and see how the core performs. I don't think it's going to ultimately make too much of a difference just having one fan that isn't the, re the same as the other two, uh, but it is something that you guys just need to take into consideration um, because I honestly have no control and can't really do much about it. So with all that being said, let me know what you guys think of the design. I think it looks pretty good. But what we'll do now is we've set up a little sound measuring tool. We've set it up about 20 inches um, from the PC because that's roughly you know, how far you'd be sitting from your PC. So let me just turn that on, try and get it in focus if it wants to focus. So basically it's 20 inches away, which is roughly how far you'd be sitting from the computer. And we've set it to, or we set the fan speed on the PC to be roughly 35 dBA because you don't want to just ramp the fans up to 100% and then run your benchmark. You want to sort of set a sort of a baseline. And from what I've seen, most of the other reviewers set it about 20 inches away from the PC and set the fans to be basically producing um, 35 dBA worth of noise. That way you've got a fair comparison between all your different fans and all your different coolers. So we'll set it to 20 inches, 35 dBA, which is roughly about 1400 RPM. We're gonna run IDA 64 stress test for about 10 or 15 minutes, and we'll come back and we'll see how it actually performs. Okay, so we've been going for about 20 minutes now, and we've been running IDA64, like I said, stressing the CPU and FPU. So looking at this at the moment, you know, we're still running it over 20 minutes now. And in terms of temperatures, you can see here we're using hardware monitor, and the package, we're looking at about 88, 88.5 at the moment. We did hit a max of 91, 94, 90, um, but in terms of power consumption, we're actually drawing about 180 watts at the moment, which is pretty crazy. We did get a max of 195, um, but in terms of our cores, we're sort of settling in around about that 4.6 gigahertz mark on every single core. So considering, you know, we're sitting at about 86 degrees Celsius at the moment with, you know, the fans still not at their maximum, as I said before, these fans can go up to 2200 RPM. Um, we've only got two out of the three um, that come with the package. So, you know, take it for what it is, but I don't think that third fan is really having too much of a negative impact on the overall performance of the cooler. Maybe if there was just two, it definitely would, but three, I think as long as they're all spinning, is not gonna to be too bad. So what I might do now is just reboot, reboot the computer and turn pre pre precision boost off, I can't speak for some reason, and we'll see what those temperatures go to, you know, when we're sitting, setting a limit of about 140 watts. So give me one second and I'll come right back. Okay, we're back, precision boost has been disabled. So basically that means that the CPU is capped to only consume a maximum of 140 watts instead of the you know 200 watts that we had before. And as you can see here on the package, we're only sitting about 71, 72 degrees Celsius. And you know, we're right up against that, I guess, limit that AMD sets with that precision boost overdrive of 140 watts. So if you've got a CPU 
you know, that's going to consume anywhere between 100 and 200 or 100 and 175 watts, this cooler is going to be absolutely fine. I think if you're really wanting to push it, you know, and, you know, constantly be drawing over 200 watts, you know, you might find a bit of a limit with this cooler, but overall it performs really, really well. To see my CPU temps, even though, you know, Precision Boost is turned off at only 72 degrees, under full load with Ida64 stressing everything out. Um, you know, we're consuming, like I said, 140 watts and settling in around about that 4 gigahertz, 4.2 gigahertz mark, 4.3, you know, is actually pretty crazy. And once we get into games as well, it's going to be even better because we're not going to be loading up every single core. So maybe what we'll do now is we'll just jump into a game and we'll see what those temps are actually like. Okay, so we're now in game, we're running Doom Eternal at 4K, native resolution, ultra nightmare settings, and in terms of temperatures, we've got the CPU sitting at only 70 degrees Celsius, we were boosting up close to 4.9 gigahertz earlier, GPU settling in around about 75, 76 on a full load, so I think we can call that a win, and that this CPU cooler from Deepcool is doing a fantastic job at keeping this processor nice and cool and allowing it to boost up you know as high as 4.9 gigahertz and i'm sure if we turn on precision boost overdrive we're going to get even more frame rate but to get 150 frames a second at doom eternal 4k ultra nightmare is pretty insane so i'm going to wrap up this video now i think that we could all say though that this cooler is doing a fantastic job and i think deep cool should be quite proud of themselves Alrighty guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Big thank you to Deepcool for sending over this all-in-one cooler for me to check out and test for you guys. Overall, I am very, very satisfied with the performance that I'm getting from this cooler, keeping the 5900X CPU under 80 degrees Celsius when gaming is a very, very difficult task and this cooler has done a really, really good job. Despite the fan that failed overall, I'm going to be leaving this cooler in my system and going to continue using it until something else comes along that is better. But overall, I am very, very, very happy. I'm sure if I reach out to Deepcool and say, hey, can you guys send me over another fan they're not going to have any issue with that at all but yeah maybe the only thing I would say is I would love to see a white one in the future because you know my build is predominantly white and I know a lot of you out there have white builds that you're maybe wanting to put this cooler into so a white version might be nice but we'll have to wait and see what deep cool ends up doing now the only thing I haven't talked about yet is price so they have said that this cooler the 360 mil version will be a hundred 129 US dollars there will be a smaller 240 mil version coming out at 99 US dollars and I think when you convert and you compare against other brands like Corsair and NZXT this cooler does perform better or on par and I haven't tested those coolers this is just from what I've been reading and researching online and I think that's what I think Deepcool does best is bring really high performing products at a good value and a good price to performance ratio and I think for a lot of you guys that's probably the most important thing is how much money is it uh, does it perform really well and can I save a buck that might allow me to maybe purchase or upgrade other parts of my system so big big props to Deepcool for making such a good product at such a good price point so that's it. If you have any questions about the product or the test or the video or anything else, let me know in the comment section. I want to hear back from you guys, of course. Join the Discord server, link to that in the video description, as well as the link to the product. And other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.